Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the state set for, archite for architecture renderings. So when you enter the 3ds Max, press the X button and write state set. This is the menu I have over here. Building, a few cameras in the scene and few suns. The best way to do it is to turn off firstly all the lights in the scene. Then for this easiest way I'm going to split my screen. You press here the button and say out of state. I'm going to rename it And then record the first state. The idea is to have many few cameras and few suns in the same scene and just by clicking to go into the camera with the per particular sun for this camera. So to set the first one with the, this button you can record the changes and with uh, the arrow you go into the camera. So I'm going to start recording. In the perspective view I go to the first camera and then I'm going to turn on the sun and then after that I'm going to stop recording and go out of the state. Then I'm going to add another state Rename it again. Start recording with this button here. In the perspective view, I go to the second camera. Turn on the second sun and stop recording. Go out of the, the camera. I'm going to do another one. Again, renaming, start recording, go to the third camera and turn on the third sun. So how can I see, did I do it right correctly? Every time when you press an arrow, you're supposed to go to the camera. And I can see here in the top view that the correct sun is turned on. Then to the second camera, correct sun, and then to the third one. The other way to test this is if I activate the interactive rendering, when I go to the first camera, is the correct light and camera, then to the second one, and then to the third one. This is really fast way to set many cameras in one scene without having additional layers and writing down so writing the different layers and cameras in the viewport. The other thing that really that really that's really useful is when I'm here, let's say in the third one, I can start recording and decide to hide this tree and I stop recording. We can see here in the viewport, so for the third camera, here this tree is hidden, but for the rest of the cameras it's there. They allow us also to have a different environment. Let's say we would like to have the third camera um, a night mode. So I will record turning off the sun. I'll stop record, recording for the second and then here I've prepared an HDRI and I'm going to apply it um, to the environment. So I, I'll start recording 
we're in the third camera i'll go to the environment and here put the hdri for the disk view and then i'll turn off the recording and if i go now let's say it and try the interactive view we have disk view for this one i'll just go ahead and test is everything all right with the rest of them so in the same scene without just by clicking a button i can go to camera camera one which is a daylight camera to daylight again and camera three which is night And if I turn on the environment, when I switch between the state sets here, we can see the environment is being switched to. Using the state sets can really boost your workflow and save you a lot of time and a lot of um, wrong HDRIs with the particular camera, with the correct or incorrect, uh, really can allow you to use different moods in one scene, not by splitting this into different scene because you have different moods. Another useful trick with the state sets, even later on in the project, is the ability to set different resolution and output folders and render settings for the different cameras. Let me show you this. If I go to CGI1, open the render settings and uh, start recording. I would like to have a square resolution for this CGI. I make it square here. Then I would like to have, let's say, seven minutes and I would like to save it in this folder. CGI01, okay. And let me change the light cache to 1200. I'll stop the recording and everything that I just recorded, it's written here under render properties. The width, light cache, output folder, and the uh, time for the progressive. Now if I go to the second camera, here I can set different options. Let's say here I would like to have it more rectangular. Oh, sorry. Let me first start recording. So first start, press the record button then change the resolution, change the output folder, CGI2, like this. Then I would like to have this different type, different subdivisions, I would like to turn all the render elements and that's it for this camera. Everything that we just did saved here again with render elements disabled um, and the light cache and the output folder. And now if I switch between, just to double check it whether it's okay or not. If I go to the first camera, let me see. Okay, the correct folder, the correct resolution. If I go to CGI2, the correct resolution, and again, the correct folder, and the correct render settings. Even though I can change also the render engines, if I press the record button and I would like to have it first like bucket 
and here are the subdivisions. I'll start the recording. And everything will be here, the subdivisions. and the type if i go out and i can click again i can just double check whether it's saved correctly yes i have it i can even go let's say to my third camera open again the settings and start the recording and let's say i want to use another engine i can go to the v-ray gpu here and let's say I would like to have again the square resolution stop I'll stop the recording and here under the render properties I can see that I've changed here even the render settings and this you can set the particular render settings and output resolutions and folders for every single camera once and just switch them before clicking the render button. This will save you a lot of mistakes and times if you have one scene with a lot of cameras and will save you a lot of stress as well. Just the last, the final trick that I would like to share with you is when you click the X button, when you press it and start writing state set, here you can see the list with all of the state sets that you already set up and just by clicking you can go to the cameras with their settings if you enjoyed anything in the video then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does if you haven't subscribed yet click below and join us we have some great videos coming up that you don't want to miss. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video.